for our next presenter, who you may have seen on Fox News, Fox Business Network, RT America, Cheddar TV, CBS News, or many other stations. She's an expert stock market analyst and the founder and owner of an international education company where she teaches people how to successfully trade the stock market. Her trading methodology is based on a strategy called Golden Gaps, which pinpoints institutional money in the stock market. Here to present make fast profits trading in 30 minutes a day is Miss Melissa Armo of the Stock Swoosh. Welcome back to Trader's Corner, Melissa. Thank you so much for having me. Great to be here on a Saturday afternoon. Hey, likewise. And, you know, happy everything to you, too. I can't wish you a Father's Day, well, but, I know. you know. <laughs> Actually, my Father's Day, my father just left this morning. He came yesterday to spend two days with me in New York, and he's going home right now. He's driving back, too. PA, and we had a wonderful, wonderful two days, and happy Father's Day to all the Father's Day out there for tomorrow. It's a great, beautiful weekend here in New York City, great weather. So luckily, some people came here today to listen to the different speakers and hear everyone talk and get some ideas. You know, if you're a father or a grandfather or a pop-up and you have extra time and you want to trade or make money on the side... Trading is something that you can do that doesn't involve trading for 40 hours a week or even the six and a half hours a day that the market is open. You can trade a selective time period and make money or you could trade options where you put the trade on and then after you take the trade, you put a sell order and you don't have to watch or babysit the trade all day. So trading is something that any, everyone can do from every walk of life. Actually, you, you have to learn how to trade before you risk funding the market. And obviously you need the money for an account to open an account and brokerage account. But it's something that everyone can learn. And, I, and again, I get this question all the time. People say, well, I'm too old, I'm too old to trade, I'm too old to learn something new. That's absolutely, absolutely not the case. No matter how young you are or how old you are, you can still become successful trading the stock market. And I think once people get the bitten by the market bug, and they want to trade, they kind of never lose sight of that dream. They always want to do it. They may take a break. They may, you know, come back to it, take a break, come back to it. But I think the commitment is really such a big part of some of the success I've seen with clients that I've taught over the years. People that stick with it have a higher chance of success because they don't take a break and step back. They're fully committed to doing it and they just push forward. And sometimes that's the best thing you could do. It's like if you're if you're walking up a mountain or you're on a hike or you're going through some kind of thing where you're training for a marathon or any physical exercise that seems grueling, the best thing you can do sometimes is just push forward and push through it. So welcome everyone. Thanks for having me. We're going to talk today about how to make fast profit shorting. We're going to focus on shorting in just 30 minutes a day. And anyone that has any questions, you can plop them in the question section there. I can look at them and see them as we're going along. This is me. If you've seen me, you may have seen me on TV. Again, I'm here on all national news networks. I talk about the stock market and I also talk about the economy, which is very interesting because the economy and what happens, the fundamentals of the economy don't always match up to the market reactions. So the way that I trade is based on technical analysis. Now, sometimes the fundamentals do match up with the technicals, but not always. Anyways, if you're interested in more information after today, you can feel free to call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. And you can also email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com. And you can see me on TV too if you follow me on Twitter. I try to post my hits when I'm going to be on there. So I took this picture. Actually, it's a, it doesn't even look real. It looks like a postcard. I took this picture walking in Central Park. I live in New York. I've lived in New York for quite a while. But I recently moved in the last seven months to Central Park. And the quality of my life has changed dramatically since I've moved to a different section, even in the same city, even in the same town. And what I've realized coming near the park is that that more than ever, the quality of life is very, very important. I, I sort of knew that years ago when I did mortgages, which is how I transitioned into becoming a trader. I wanted a new career. I was working seven days a week, far too many hours, every single weekend as a mortgage broker, because of course realtors were showing people houses. I felt like I had no quality of life. I think the last uh, straw for me was it was Christmas Day and I was with my family and I actually had a client, not even a realtor, but a client was calling me and texting me about an investment property that he wanted to buy on Christmas Day. And I, that was like, that was it for me. I knew I needed a new career. And at that time, I had no idea about trading the market. I didn't know that you could trade the market. I didn't know anything about anything at all. 
And then I, lo and behold, I decided to look into it and it was just happened by chance. And sometimes things happen by chance. But one thing I've learned over the years, and again, moving brought me closer to this as well, that working less hours and having the ability to stop trading in the morning, go out and walk in the park, you know, having the quality of life where you're not working weekends really, really makes a big difference. First of all, it keeps you young, okay, and youthful. You're less stressed the less hours that you work. So yes, sometimes it is about the money. The more money that you make, obviously, sometimes you can have a better quality of life and less stress. But I know a lot of people in New York, actually, that make a lot of money and they're extremely stressed and they have no free time and they have a horrible quality of life. So money is a part of it. It's a part of it. But time is important too. And yet I'm sure everyone's heard time is money. So the most money you can make, the, sh the most money you can make in the shortest amount of time actually is where you want to be. So I've developed the system over the years. It took me about three years uh, to develop a system where I take fast trades. I get in and out quick in the morning and that's how I make money. And then I have the rest of the day to myself. So I think this is an important question since we're, we're talking about it here. Again, it's a Saturday. How would you rate the quality of your life? And again, you don't, you don't have to answer in the chat. You can, but really on a scale of one to 10, being the best life you could live, one being not so much, where does your life currently stand? Someone is bringing up health. Well, obviously, that's obvious, the quality of your life. You can't have a good quality of life if you're not healthy. Obviously, obviously, Arthur is bringing that up too. So if you have good health, if you can pay your bills, and good health means physical health and also financial health. But again, part of having good health is to be able to get out, exercise, be out, not sit at your desk all day, 40, 50, 60 hours a week, which people are still doing, by the way. Yes, people are not going into the office, but they're working 40, 50 hours from home behind a desk now. So again, and you know what? And people are having less socialization. So it's, I mean, I've seen a change even in New York, in the city, where people are still are coming into the offices. At least when people came out to the office, they had socialization, they bebopped out at lunch, breakfast, got a sandwich. Now people are stuck inside their homes so much still working. So quality of life is very, very important, no matter how you look at it. Some people want to trade the stock market for a living to make more money. Some people want to trade the stock market for a living to work from home. I work from home, I live in my apartment in New York. Some people want to trade the stock market for a living to be their own boss, which is if you trade for yourself, you're trading your own money, you are your own boss, okay? You're making the decisions how much money you want to risk and where you want to get out of the trade and what trades you want to do, okay? Some people want to trade the stock market for a living to have an unlimited income potential. That was also one of the reasons that I decided to do this because when I was doing mortgages, Again, how hard I worked and how many loans I did had to do with the commission that I made. And so one of the things I liked about trading the stock market was I still had an unlimited amount of income that I could make. Again, depends how many trades I take, depends how the market's doing that year, depends on how many good trades I take, depends on how much I risk, okay? Same thing for you. Some people want to trade the stock market for a living to work less hours than a normal job would require. And again, this is really important, especially if you have a family, if you have kids, okay? And you, or if you have hobbies, like my father loves to golf. You wanna do things in the afternoon or on your weekends. But while all of those are good reasons to wanna to trade the stock market for a living, what it really boils down to, no matter what it is, is to having a better quality of life, okay? When you think about the number of hours that you spend working your career, whatever your chosen field is, whatever your, whatever your job is, your career is, whatever you've spent the last 20, 25 years doing, or depending how young you are or old you are, could be even more than that. You spent a huge chunk of your life working your job, okay? So again, if you're absolutely in love with what you do, you might be fine working 50 hours a week. But if you're not, that's a different question. And I think, again, as the years go on, the world changes, which we saw since COVID, people are really questioning, wait a minute, wait a minute, do I really like this career? Is this what I want to do with my life? Where do I want to go? Is this my dream job? That kind of thing. Again, money is a vehicle. So trading may or may not be your dream job. It's my dream job for me because the freedom that I have and the money I can make and the fact that I can work from home and the fact that I can live in Manhattan, which is a fabulous place. So for you, your dream job may be something else. But again, money is the vehicle. So if you can make $1,500 in five minutes, 
you have the rest of your day to yourself to pursue something else. It could be the arts. It could be painting. Okay, it could be sports. It could be music, something else in your life. Writing a book, okay, that you couldn't pursue if you weren't making money trading and that you'd have the time to pursue more so than if you had a 40, 50 hour a week job. But if you can learn to successfully trade the stock market for a living, you can have a better quality of life. You can have all the things above and more, okay, that I just talked about. Sure, if you're successful, you can get rich. And many, many people want to. And, and that was, again, one of the reasons I decided to trade was because I had the unlimited income potential. But it's not just that. And as the years goes on, I realize more and more of that, that money, more money really means you have more time for yourself. You have more freedom in your life. And the quality of your life is important, okay? And the older you get, the more important the quality of your life becomes. And you can relate it to health. As Arthur was bringing up health, you can relate it to that. Again, if you're less stressed, you're going to have probably better health, okay? Because stress deteriorates you. It ages you. It ages you faster than otherwise. And a lot of times people have stress at their jobs when they're working a lot of hours or just dealing with the corporate America. Now, what do I mean? You realize that there are things in your life you don't want to waste your time doing anymore. And you realize there are people in your life you don't want to waste your spend, spend your time with anymore. Or just things that you're like, I'm not even, why am I worried about this? You say to yourself, there's just things that are not worth stressing out over. And you get a perspective, okay? And if, if anything, we should, everyone should have a different perspective about the world and life since COVID. Again, we're three years outside of that, but the world has changed. You want to make a lot of money for sure, but you also want to realize the quality of the time that you're taking to earn that money if you break it down. And again, when I was doing mortgages, if I broke it down, the number of hours that I worked divided by the money I was making on each loan, it was, it was probably less than minimum wage because I was spending so much time, so much time with each client and so much time with each real estate agent. But anyways, that's one of the reasons why I like the fast trades. If I trade fast and earn money, then fast trading means I have freedom. And I have the time to do what I want, okay? Whether it's walking in the park, seeing the animals, the turtles, anything else I wanna do, it's very calming for me to go out and walk in the park. And I made a lot of sacrifices to get to this point in my life to even be here, to even be where I'm at today. And it was, again, for many people I find, as teaching people over the years, I've had the stock switch business for going on 11 years now. It's a lot of people want everything right away, right away, yesterday, today, this second, okay? It's the sacrifices. So it's the short-term sacrifice for the long-term benefit of getting to the point where you want, where you want with your training, where you want with your life, where you want to be, where your goals are, how much money you want to make. And again, whether that's taking a class or paying for a class or investing your time in learning how to become a good trader, your life will improve. And what I've found, again, I have a business where I teach people my method and I also trade it every day in the live room. I've found that many people have, they've shift where they really don't have an interest in learning as much as when I started the business years ago. Everybody just wants to take trades. They just want to trade and make money. Well, again, if you learn what to do, you're going to make more money and you're going to trade a lot better. And also it's important to learn what to do because if I ever stop tra uh, trading or teaching this class, if I ever decide to retire and not do this, then how are you going to know what I do when I'm calling the good trades that I'm calling? Learning and understanding is one of the reasons why I'm very good at what I do because I developed the system myself and I've been doing nothing but my gap rating system since I, since I started trading, which is about 15 years ago. So we are going to talk about my system here today, but the point I want to make just to right off the bat is to set the tone that review and revamp and think about your goals and your quality of life and what you're spending your time doing because i think a lot of people don't think about that and time goes so quickly look at it it's june and two it's less than two weeks it's going to be today's the 17th it's almost july 4th can you believe it the summer is halfway through that's nuts to me before you know it it's going to be halloween christmas the holidays this year has flown by so when you think about it, can you want to live in the stock market as a professional trader? The answer is yes. You absolutely, absolutely, absolutely can. But a lot of people, as I said, just do not have the right focus. They don't have the right strategy, and you need that. Now, I put here the results for last month in our live trading room. Again, I run a live trading where I call the day trades. These are day trades. These are equity trades. The average risk for this is $2,800 per trade for these results. You can take less risk. You could take more risk, okay? Okay. So again, I have the winners in here and the losers in parentheses, 59,912 for the month of May. We had a good month. I'm mostly short. 
So we will talk about shorts today. And the reason I prefer to short is that stocks fall faster than they rally. That's just a fact. So again, you saw that even in Friday, okay? Things fell Friday, Adobe reported, Adobe started to fall. It's a market stock, it pulled the market down in Friday. We also had some data, but the market fell pretty fast on Friday. So stocks and the market tend to fall faster than they rally. I also put in here the stats for just to show me an entire year. This is again, an average risk per trade of $2,800 per trade. These are equity trades, which you would trade on margin. All calls I made to the room, the results for one full year, which was 651.079. We had a good year. The market fell a lot last year, but I short in a bullish market or a bearish market. You can't deny that at this point now in 2023, June, where we're at, we are actually in a bullish market. We've done shorts, we've done longs, we've done both, but I prefer to short. So that's what we're gonna talk about here today. So every day I get up in the morning and I go to find the best short. If I can't find the best short, I will go long. So for example, actually, it's kind of funny looking at how it closed. We went long to video on Friday. We were in and out really, really quick, really, really fast. We made money going long to video, even though it closed red on Friday. Because again, I'm trading in the morning between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time very fast. And my focus is that I'm trying to find a bullseye, hit a bullseye every single day in one trade, in one stock, in one pick. Having a strategy to focus on daily is very important and no distractions. And, it, and trading is a real job if you take it seriously. The problem is, like I said, a lot of people don't. Now, I also do options. We will discuss some options trades in here. I risk more money in my options trades because I want to take expensive picks, some things that are expensive, expensive stocks, okay? And I also want to hold overnight and take larger positions. This, so the results are higher uh, for the options results for 2022 because I was risking $8,000 per trade. You don't have to do that. You can risk one contract. If you have a cash account, if you do not have a margin account, or if you have a retirement account, and you can only buy calls and sell calls or buy puts and sell puts, you, if you cannot short, um, if you can do not have a margin account, you can do options, okay? So this was over $3 million a year for 2022 for the results, but part of it is the, my risk was higher, okay? You can take less of a risk, like I said. And again, some of these were calls, some of these were puts. We will go over options today as well. But day trading is part-time hours with full-time pay. You've got to have an edge. For me, it's the fast trades. For me, it's also the shorts. And for me, it's the gap, which we're going to talk about. Now, as I was talking about earlier, the economic data, things that are coming out, you can understand that money controls the world. Institutional money controls the world. You saw what happened earlier this year, back in March, with some of the banks that were failing. Will there be more banks that fail between now and 2023? There could be. There absolutely could be. Would that change the direction currently of the stock market? Yes. Yes, it would. And you need to know that. You need to know that specifically if you are in long positions for the long term, swing trade positions or whatever, because if something happens as it has been happening, when the banks have been going under, they've been always, always going under over a weekend. When the, when the FDIC has taken over those banks and they've crashed, it's always happened on a Friday into the weekend. They plan that. And so it's very, very interesting because again, institutional money controls the world. You saw interest rates bump up if you paid attention to it um, before the Fed meeting this week. No, the Fed didn't raise rates, but they signaled that they will raise at least two more times this year or more. And they also signaled that they're gonna continue to keep rates high until 2025. That's a long time. So the market had a very mixed reaction to that. Positive in the sense that they halted raising rates this month, but not good because we're gonna have higher interest rates for longer than people expected. Some people thought they'd lower rates this year. That's off the table as far as I'm concerned. I don't think they're gonna do that whatsoever at all. They never gave an indication they would do that, and I didn't think that they would either, looking at how fast that they were raising rates. Um, someone's asking about alerts. Do you have to be in the trade room to get the options? The options are a daily newsletter. The trade room is a live trade room for equity trades and you must be there. The options is a newsletter, they get sent to your email. If that's an alert, it gets sent to your email if that's what you mean. Um, on your average options trades, what is your, I don't follow anything to do with those things. Whoever asked that, who is that person, David? I'm trading the gap on momentum, which again, we'll talk about here in a little bit. I know I started a little bit late here today, but I want to lose track of my time. So I'll go over more about the options in a minute. I think that was David. 
we're trading momentum. Whether it's a day trade, whether it's an option, you can do swing trades too. Momentum trading is one of the most profitable and fastest ways to make money trading because you get a big move. It could be up, could be down. Learn how to take a position in a stock in anticipation that the stock will have an explosive move. You get in before the move happens, okay? That's how you make money, not chasing it. Momentum trading is very profitable. And again, that's how you can make big money in the market. Now here's, for example, one that we did. This was Disney. We did, we did a couple trades in this, but this one here I have in here was Disney 522. So again, what is a gap? Let's talk about it. I said that I do gaps. A gap is when a stock, let's just look at this one. A gap is when a stock closes at one number. At four o'clock Eastern time, the US stock market closes every day at four and opens the next day at 9.30. It's when it closes at one price and opens at a different price. This was a gap down. You also have gap ups. This was a gap up. Market closed here at four and opened at a higher price the next day at 9.30 and then it rallied. This was a gap down. You cannot short every gap down. You cannot go long every gap up. That is why I developed a system to determine the direction of the gap so that I knew to play it. I do not trade the pre-market. I do not trade the post-market. I wait to do trades in the open. You cannot do options in the pre-market or post-market anyways. Okay. So this was an option we did in Disney. I called it on 522. We'll go back and look at it. It was really cheap. 90 cents. Again, it depends how much you want to risk. Say you want to take 11 contracts, $990 is a very reasonable amount of money, and you could have made 1210 Return on investment, 122%. So I called the Disney $90 strike puts. This is a newsletter. If you want to sign up for this, I sent them out at 944 on the 22nd. This was, this was a weekly. We're doing the weekly. So let's look, take a look at it. Here's the 22nd. Boom and boom. Mm, there it goes. So that was a put. So you see how the stock fell. It went boom and it went down. So again, we're trading momentum. In this case here, we had a gap down to the one uh, like that. It went down. Okay, it sold off. And so we did a put. Okay, so the newsletter looks like this, where you would buy the put, the $90 put. But I'm looking for institutional money. Who is selling it? Who is buying it? What's happening right now in the overall market? You've seen quite a bit of buying in the last few days. Okay, you can go over the reasons, this thing, that thing, where it's going to go. But right now you're getting some buying coming into this market. We're also been looking for things like selling. We shorted Target, for example. That was a nice short. If you look up that chart, if you pull that up, I have that here in the lecture. Target fell. Okay. But I'm looking for big money when I'm making my trading decisions and I'm honing it down. One trade a day, if that. I might put a few options on if I'm seeing that somebody's going to go in the same direction as the market, again, whether they're calls or puts, when I'm taking a trade. But I'm always looking for who is in charge. So I told you that we did NVIDIA. Actually, this was not Friday's bar, but NVIDIA broke out here. I did a call on NVIDIA that ran up here this week as well, which was an options trade. We did the 395 calls. It was a nice, it was a nice trade. I actually got out of it a little bit early um, because I wanted to get out of it before the Fed meeting because I didn't know the reaction of that meeting. So I was conservative, took my profits, I was up, I got out. Because if the market had fallen after the Fed meeting, that I would have, my trade would have reversed. But in reference to Navinia, again, I'm looking for momentum. In this case here, closed here, gapped up, boom, this had a movement to the upside, and again, it was a call in the options newsletter, which was a long, and you could have gone long the stock. And like I said, we did go long the stock actually on Friday. So you're always asking yourself who's in charge, the bulls or the bears. If the bulls are in charge, you want to go long. If the bears are in charge, you want to short because you've got to you've got to make more money. You've got to make money in more winners than losers, meaning you have to have a high win ratio when you trade. So whether you're risking $100 a trade or $500 a trade or $2,000 a trade, if you're not having more winners and losers, you're not going to make it in this game. You're just not, okay? So again, people talk about small accounts, big accounts, medium accounts. Whatever is comfortable for you has to be where you're at financially. Again, whether you can trade options or do day trades on margin, that's up to you. But the bottom line is you still need more winners. You need more winners and losers. And like I just got done telling you, I got out of NVIDIA a little early, but it was a winner. You can't let winners turn into losers, and certainly not in this market. The market is bullish, okay? But I would say for the first better part of the beginning of the 2023, the market was choppy and it was in a range for a while. 
Whether we hold this uptrend or not, or whether we break off remains to be seen. Again, we still have six and a half months left in the year. But if you're booking money constantly, day after day after day after day, you shouldn't be worried about where we are long term in August, September, December of 2023. The bottom line is that you need to be consistently, consistently booking money, okay? And if you're consistently booking money, okay, then that's what you have to do. You have to keep going. Um, somebody's saying something. Yes, I do trade. I'm not sure why anyone's saying about that. Again, I've been trading since, since I started. But again, I didn't develop my system. It took about three years. So I started trading in 2008. It's 2023. But when I first started trading, I wasn't doing this. I took one class. And then after that, I realized, I didn't know what that, what that person was. <laughs> I just had a little, a little pop in person there that was funny. Um, <laughs> anyways, I uh, took about three years from 2008 to 2012 to develop my system. So when I first started trading, I was not making money, but then I did start make mon making money. And actually I was in a trading room where I was talking in the room and I was actually kind of calling trades in the room. And then somebody said, you should start to do videos. So then I started to do videos on YouTube. And then somebody said, oh my gosh, you have a really good system. You should teach people this. And then I just kind of fell into it. So it was not like when I first started trading that I ever planned to actually teach my system to anyone. But I think one of the reasons that my system is such a good system is because I developed it for myself, not for anybody else. So the one class that I did take actually cost more money than my class right now, even though that was like 15 years ago. It taught me a basics of technical analysis. It didn't teach me how to make money. And so there's a lot of classes out there. And I think as you go along over the years, you have to make your own decision does this person seem like they know what they're talking about? Go and do a trading room trial, you know, and, and follow the person for a while. I have people that are following me. I have a guy that just signed up for the class, actually. He's doing the class next weekend. He's been following me for three years. Three years it took him to make up his mind. Now, that's a, that's a very, very long time, actually. But at the end of the day, whatever is comfortable for you, that you feel like you can be comfortable with the person. Again, I think that there's so many people out there, you have to kind of use common sense when you're making the decisions for yourself, who you want to go and learn from. Also, this time of the day has to work for you. I'm training between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. If you're working or you can't do that, then you can't trade in my live room. And also, you have to be able to do options or have an options account if you want to do options. But you can open up an options account with a broker as little as $2,000. So, I mean, it's, again, it's whatever works for you. Whatever person seems to connect with you or resonate for you. And that's what you have to do. But yes, I do trade and I've been trading for a long time. And I didn't start out doing options. So I started out doing day trades. I was surprised I started doing options about, it was like 2014, 2015. And actually my broker was the one that encouraged me to look into doing options. She noticed and saw my trades. And she would see that some of the trades would actually continue the second day. She's the one that said, Melissa, you, could, you should start to look into this, start to do it. And then I kind of just started doing them. And then I started applying my gap method to options too. And one of the things that's so profitable about doing options, is not just so you can trade high cost stocks for less money, but also that you can capture overnight moves. So if you, for example, buy a call and the stock gaps down the next day, it could be way through the money or you could buy a, or gaps up the next day, it could be way through the money in a call, or you buy a put and the stock gaps down the next day and you could be up a lot of money if it's down, if you bought the put the day before. That does not happen in every trade I take, okay? But that does happen in some trades which make them very profitable. So you're capturing overnight moves without the risk of having a swing trade. When you take a swing trade, I don't wanna to get too off topic here, but when you take a swing trade, you're still on margin two to one or cash. When you have an options account to capture the overnight move, you have a fixed risk. So for example, if I risk $8,000, I can't lose any more than that. Even if I would short the market and then we would gap up on, on Tuesday morning, Monday the market's closed for Juneteenth, I, I would only lose 8,000 if the whole trade would go bust, for example. So you have a fixed risk, which is like the insurance. And that's the other reason why trading options is, is, is also advantageous. Let me see here. 
Um, do I, ch I check volume? Someone's asking about option flow. I check volume. I don't check anything that's not volume. Um, no, I'm not upset at all, except for the fact that somebody's, somebody's window came up, somebody's picture came up, which is actually kind of funny because that was not me, just so you know. Um, I, I don't have my webcam up, but my, my office is to not totally organized yet. One day I will be totally organized and totally unpacked in my new apartment. And then you can see my, my beautiful home. But right now I'm still, I'm still situated that. <laughs> Um, let's get back to what we were saying. Institutional money is in charge of the stock market at all times. A big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market. Stocks creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. When you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of the power in a stock. You want to be on the side of power in order for you to make money trading. Institutional money is in charge of market and stocks at all times. Now, I was talking earlier about Target. Actually, I didn't do this move here. So this fell. Again, I talk on TV. Everyone was talking on TV. I was on Newsmax talking about Target. You know, we didn't do this, okay? We ended up doing a later trade in this here. It worked. It fell, okay? But, you know, you could have gotten this here. You know, this wasn't on my radar. Again, this was not an earnings gap. It was a news gap. I talked about this in Newsmax, how people were boycotting Target. They were upset about some of the, uh, the pride displays. Anyways, we did some options in this and we did some day trades in this. This was 612, right here, that little bar. We entered it here at 126.50, shares was 3,500, risk was 31.50, exit was 125.55, profit was 33.25. This is a trade on margin. If you cannot trade on margin, you could have bought the 125 puts, okay? Or you buy as close as a strike as you can which, which would have been the 125s to get it down. And again, you could have made money. And again, I'm doing the weeklies, okay? Oh, here's the one minute. So again, this is 612. And again, in the trading room, I'm live in the room. If you want a trial to the room, you can email me. I call the trades live in the room. You must be there to get them. The options is a newsletter that you can, you just get them to your email, okay? So anyways, this closed here gap down fell rallied we shorted it got the drop again nice train beautiful train got the drop right in here again in and out quick depends how much size you are taking i don't think this is crazy expensive this is probably medium priced in target then we also did mu again we were talking about institutional buying and institutional selling what's happening in mu it sold off so the entry was 65.50 shares was 4,000. risk was 3200 Exit was 64.48. Again, I'm looking for a dollar. Whatever I risk, whatever my position size is, I'm looking to make one to one. And I did. So 4,080 was the profit with a $3,200 risk on Mew. You could have taken 1,000 shares. You would have made a little over $1,000. Again, when I'm in the live room, I'm calling the trade when I'm doing it. You must learn how to do this, but I do offer trials where I call to get in first, the stop, and then I call where I'm getting out. You do not have to get out where I get out. You can hold longer. Like I said, NVIDIA kept going. So there are trains where I will take the faster exit and they still continue to go, okay? Uh, this was the mu here from 6.8. Stock closed here, gap down, fell. So that was the day that we shorted it. And again, this is a bearish gap. And again, this is the one minute. Just gotta watch my time here. So again, it's all about institutional money. Just talking about here, what is a gap? A stock gap to the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple. So in the case of Mu, again, it closed at four o'clock, gap down here at 9.30 and fell like that. So again, it fell quickly and fast. That's what you're looking for. That's what you wanna do each and every single solitary day. Same thing with Target. Target, again, was institutional selling. Again, whether you did it here, whether you did it here, you had selling and you had shorts. Institutional money was selling off the stock. So there's one thing that's in charge of the market at all times. It's power money. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power money people, of which was a lot of the market. And I think it's very difficult for traders because, again, many, many traders want to do things that are tricky. What I do actually makes perfect sense. It's common sense. P 
people want to do things that are tricky because they think that's how they're going to make a lot of money. Again, it's not about that. It's about being consistent and having more wins and more winners than losers. If you have more winners than losers, you are going to make money overall. You have to risk the same amount or close to the same amount in every trade that you take. That's how you can be consistent, okay? Because what if you took one trade, say for example, and you risked a thousand dollars, and then you took five trades and you risked two hundred dollars? Well, you could be you could have one bad trade and then five good trades and be break even or even upside down. So the point is that your risk has to be consistent and you also need more winners than losers. But everything I focus on is based on gaps. Gaps happen every day in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are better than others. And I'm always looking for the big move. This is another one we did, this was 524. Again, this was a gap down in the SPY, closed here, gap down fell, boom. Profit was 3,450. And again, this was the SPY. This was this day here, we shorted it, got the drop. So you need a foundation to train. You need an infrastructure. For me, it is, is gaps, okay? And the thing is that a lot of people are buying the dips right now in the market. It is working because the market has rallied, like I said, for the last couple of days and the last couple of weeks. That's not going to continue all year. So whether the market's bullish or whether the market's bearish, I'm always looking each day for something different to do. Some days I do do the market. Some days I do something different. But a stock is, is most, most there's gaps every day. Whether I'm finding a good gap or a gap that's not good is up to me when I look at the rating system when I'm analyzing something. And the reason I prefer to short and I'm focusing on bearish institutional money is because short moves happen very fast and very quickly. And again, you know, we've done the market, but the market's been rallying quite a bit lately. So, I mean, there's there's times where we'll do the market, but there's times where we're looking for very specific uh, uh, stocks like Target or even we did Foot Locker. Uh, this was one we did, funny to look at this here now in the SPY. I did the 415 puts. Again, this is crazy to think about now. This was a month ago. It was before Memorial Day weekend, May 23rd. I bought a put in the SPY. I'll go show you the chart in a minute. I mean, to think about where the market's at right now, this is crazy, but this was pretty reasonably priced. $3.25 cost 7500 So again, my average risk is $8,000 per option straight. Again, I have been trading options now for over eight years. If you're someone that is new to options trading, I would say keep your risk under $500, okay? Or under $300. Even $1,000 is a good risk. So you could have made $1,500 for the $1,200 risk, 125% investment on this trade. Let's look at it. This was 8.36 in the morning. I sent it out, the 4.15 puts. Here was the day. Again, SPY closed here, gap down, take it over, fell through into the strike, gap down again here, fell through. See it? I don't know if somebody's phone is ringing. <laughs> somebody's phone is ringing. There. Hey, Harry Boxer again. Are you, can you hear me? Anyways, the time of the day is so important to make money. And I will just- Melissa, I apologize. One of the other presenters got unmuted somehow. Oh, uh, that's why I was like, okay. Is it, I don't know if people have been popping in and out all day. I'm like kind of laughing at this. I, I just- as long as you can hear me, I'll just keep talking through it. This is this is like live TV, where something happens like in live TV, which has happened before. One time I was on Newsmax, I'll tell you really quick, live TV, and the feed cut off of the of the of the anchor. I couldn't hear what the anchor was asking me, and but I knew what the topic was. I said I can't hear what you're saying, but I'm just gonna talk. And I just started talking because it was through Skype. It was on a Skype hit. Anyways, getting back to trading, um, once you learn how to do it, it's really, really not hard. Does it mean that you never have hard days? No. I have had some hard days over even the last month. I've had some hard days where I'm in a train. It doesn't go as fast as I want. It doesn't go as quick as I want, you know, and, and again, or it doesn't go in the direction that I want it to. You know, with options, you have to get the timing right. So yeah, you can take a trade and it may go, you could buy a call, for example, and it might go up. But if I don't get the momentum in that call 
before my expiration date, prefer preferably before the expiration or on the expiration date, then I could lose in the trade, but be right in the direction that the stock might be higher. So you, it's not that you're never going to have bad days once you become successful and making money. It's that you have way more good days than bad days. It's that you're up week over week, month over month, and year over year. And again, how good of a week or a month you have depends on the quality of your picks. And it also depends on how much money you're risking. But you can't risk a lot of money until you learn what to do. So when I first started trading options, like I said, it was around 2014, 2015, I was only risking $1,000 in my options trades. It was enough that if it, if it worked and I had like a 200% return investment trade, I made two grand and was happy. And while I was still trying to develop my whole system doing it with the options way, then I only lost $1,000. So again, if you're new to options, I say keep it under 500, but you know, you can, you can start with 1,000. But that's a good enough amount that if you lose in it, it's not the end of the world. You know, but again, I've been doing options now for over eight, eight years and trading for 15, day trading. Whether you want to day trade or whether you want to do options, it's totally, totally up to you, which depends on whether you have a margin account or an options account. But you need a daily focus, and it's about having a high probability, like I talked about, which I teach in my class, which is a 26-point rating system. So I teach a class, it's once a month. Sometimes I get busy, I don't do a class one month, I'm too busy with TV and trading, but I try to do a class once a month. The next class is June 24th and 25th, and I teach my 26-point Golden Gap rating system. It helps you pick which stock to trade each day. It's a checklist. This is what you will learn in my class. You will also learn how to raise institutional money. You will learn the entries, you will learn the exits, you will learn targets, and again, it's a full weekend class. It's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. The class is online, and it teaches you how to enter the stock each day. But it is about empowering yourself, like I talked about at the beginning, to make money in the market, and you need a system to do that. My class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The class is online. It's $69.99 for the class. Class is June 24th and 25th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. And again, if you'd like a trial to the live room, I trade in the room live Monday through Friday. You can email me for a trial, but you cannot join the room until after you do the course. The, the course is a prerequisite for actually joining the room. The room opens at 9 a.m. I trade between 9.30 and 10, 10.15. Maybe I might trade till 10.30. And again, you can go to YouTube. I have tons and tons of videos on YouTube, some of the live room, which you can watch to see what we do. Now, I'm doing a hawk special. Look at that. This hawk is on my roof. This hawk lives on my roof. So I, I went up to the roof like about a month ago, and I saw him. It was unbelievable. This hawk is huge. He was so close. I've taken a bunch of friends up there. In fact, if you go to my YouTube, I have some videos of him. Amazing, amazing creatures. I mean, to see a hawk this size up so close. Again, I live right on Central Park. I mean, so it's, it's crazy, crazy to see something this size this close. I mean, it was an unbelievable sight. It was an unbelievable sight. Actually, I took my father up there this morning. We didn't see him. He probably was out hunting hunting this morning, but I'm sure he's, he's up there at some point today. Anyways, I'm doing a special really quickly for the class. If you sign up by next Friday, the class again is starting on Sunday. You get the training room and the options newsletter free through the end of this year and five one-hour mentoring sessions with you. So the class is $69.99. Everyone pays the same. I'm offering these bonuses, the Hawk special bonus. Um, let me just see what people are saying. Huh. Hawks hunt pigeons. Well, they, they hunt a lot of things. They'll eat small dogs, a, a hawk that size. Um, should be at least 10K. You know what? I feel like I'm trying to support people. I'm trying to support people. Some people think the class is underpriced when they see the class. Some people think it's overpriced when they paid for classes that are $1,000. You get what you pay for with me. You are going to learn my system. You're going to get my mentoring. You're going to get my help. You're going to get the trades. You know, I'm trying to make it reasonable so people can put it on a credit card and pay. But at the end of the day, it is up to you if this sounds like something that you want to do. And again, you can feel free to call me if you have questions. I think people have to sift through what's out there. But again, the level of commitment that's necessary to be successful must be there or you won't be successful. And so again, it's how much do you value your time, what you want to do, and do you want to make it? You know, like I said, there's plenty of time left in the year to make money. Even if you've not been making money the first part of this year, you will be successful if you learn what to do. Um, okay, great. Thanks so much. I think I'm 
I think I'm. Am I good with time? Oh, um, you're fine. If I'm happy to let anybody run a minute or two over, usually the next presenter understands. But <laughs> if you want to end it here, you know, we'll thank you. We'll ask any further questions to be directed to you through email or by calling your number. Sure. And uh, that's it. You know, your topic: how to make fast trading in 30 minutes a day. Had me on the edge of my seat. I love your Golden Gaps course. I'm curious <laughs> what the criteria is. It's a lot. I might want to 26 it, so. things. Yeah, 26 things is a lot. These, before I get really quick, I took these pictures too in Central Park. Look at those turtles. I've become a nature girl. I tell you, it's this has done wonders for me living by the park. And again, think about the takeaway out before I go is think about the quality of your life. You do not have to work 40, 50, 60 hours a week to have everything you want you can earn a good income and still have free time so have a wonderful father's day weekend everyone thank you melissa thank you for being